Hi, this is Vince Gilligan, executive producer of Breaking Bad. This is Betsy Brandt. I play Hank Schrader. Oh, you do not. Yes, Betsy. I do. Uh, Brian Cranston as Walter White is here. RJ Mitty as Walter Jr. Jennifer Hutchison as the writer of this episode. Yay! Yay! Jenny! Hey, Jenny. <laughs> hey, maybe we should start with that. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about that success story. That, that's quite a story. She didn't even speak or read English up until, <laughs> I don't know, 18 months ago when you came to this We're country. We're so proud. Yeah. We're so proud. Where did, where did you come from? What country was that? Bolivia. Bolivia? Yes. Really? Yes. Beautiful. Uh, so, so Jenny um, as, uh, was my wonderful assistant years and years ago. When did I meet you? It was 1999? Yes, 1999. And uh, you, were on the, you were working on the X-Files. Uh, and uh, that's where I met you. And um, then you were a, a writer's. Well, what am I saying it for? You, you tell the story. You tell. Them. Uh, I was on X Files, and then uh, I just bounced from show to show like a gypsy. And then I ended up on Breaking Bad in the first season, and uh, was the writer's assistant. And then I, you know, forced Vince to let me write a script. I know. She okay, does this thing with your thumb. Where she bends <laughs> it backwards. Oh, nice. It's very painful. I passed out briefly. Yes. And uh, you did a great job. Yes, you did a, this is you did a wonderful job writing this. Thank you. There is uh... further, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Eloquent. That's Eloquent. A okay. sample of her writing. Yes. Roll there me you. further, bitch. Yes. My mom was proudest. <laughs> yes, I bet. I bet. I bet. I mean, she loved it. Well, what I love is uh, Jenny is so is so uh, sweet and cute and wonderful as is uh, Michelle McLaren and both of them. Michelle is a director and Jenny is a writer. They're they're both they write good tough guy stuff. Good right. You know, by the way, this is as good a time as any if you if you uh, are uh, if you enjoy Hank's blog on uh, on the AMC website, uh, know that that was uh, all written by Jenny here. No. Yes. Really? Yes. No, it was Hank. I thought it was Walt Jr. for a little bit. <laughs> it was. It was. <laughs> So all of that great, talk about that a little, Jenny, all that great tough guy dialogue. Yes, it's fun. It is fun to get to be, you know, a 40-something gruff, macho DEA agent for, you know, once a week, twice a week. Thank you. Very sexy. <laughs> yes. Just rocking it. My dad is proudest of Hank's block. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. you, you introduced me to the term douche-tard. I did. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and now he uses it lovingly. Yeah, yes. yes. It's a loving remark. Yes. I, I didn't know what I was until there's, I heard that. If that's all I ever do in this business, I'll, I'll know I've succeeded. There's poor Aaron Douche Paul time. in his uh, prosthetic eye and cheek pieces oh, again. Oh, yeah. God. George's work? He loves that. It's it's tough. It, uh, it takes him a couple hours to get that little eye pit patch on and then the makeup to make it look like a real wound. And he has to wear it all day. Frida Valenzuela does it and does a terrific Just job. Frida and, and Georgia, is that? Yeah, yeah. Georgia. Yeah. Georgia, Georgia. Yeah. Georgia. Oh, that's right, Georgia. And, and, and but but yeah, Frida's running the, uh, the the crew there, and, and they all do such a good job. There was something, uh, wasn't there? Not was it on this episode where unfortunately he got one of his eyelashes tucked underneath. Yes. And so it was it was hurting him. You were there. What what happened, Jenny? Um, because his eye is free underneath the they don't tape his eye shut underneath the prosthetic. Um, his eyelashes, which are so long and luscious, uh, happened to bend oh, back. Wow. Yeah, they did. They got in his eye and he was in pain oh, no, for no. it was about a twelve hour day that Je he was Jenny in that. has a crush on a boy. <laughs> oh, you like Aaron Paul, huh? <laughs> Who doesn't like Aaron Paul? Who doesn't? Yeah. I'd screw him. I thought that was <laughs> Wow. wow. There's a line. There's and there's Vince going, going over the line. And the story, and I think we all know how Aaron Paul got cast. Yeah. <laughs> I should call him later and find out more. There's, there's uh, David. There's David Costabile. David. Yes. David is such a good actor. He's so talented. That will not happen. And then there's another other guy with him. Who's the other guy? I don't know who that is. Man in blue. Just he looks good in blue right now. Could you I love you guys together in this. I love this scene. This is this, this is, is fun. Yeah, this is fun. Where Walt is trying to to justify why he's letting him go, and t trying to use an analogy of music. <laughs> I, I love what you do here. I set up the entire lab. Jazz. Jazz. You said yeah. you liked the configuration, and I do. <laughs> Most part. That's good. Look, you're a, a fine. There's cast. Betsy's name. Woohoo! With a promising future. So. Um, this is the second, I'm because we're recording these out of order. I'm I'm, for, I'm forgetting. This is the second time, this is the third time we've seen uh, seen Gail Bedecker. 
Uh, Bedecker, by the way, named after uh, the wonderful uh, director Bud Bedecker, who directed a bunch of uh, low-budget westerns with Randolph Scott in the uh, in the mid and late 1950s. Just a really Talk about a macho guy. Uh, Bud Bedecker, in real life, uh, before he was a director, he was a uh, bullfighter. He was an Ameri oh, wow. amazing guy. He's a, 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 American, a matador? Uh, a matador. He, uh, he was an amazing guy who moved to, um, I guess it was Spain. But he was an American, and he uh, just, you know, that, that long line of tough guys like John Ford and... Uh, and uh, John Houston, tough guy directors, and but uh, this guy I think was tougher than any of them, and uh, just a great director, and has nothing at all whatsoever to do with Gail Bedecker's, uh, uh, you know, uh, personality or, or, or personage or anything. We just love the name, and so we were basing it on Bud Bedecker. I like this bit. This is good. <laughs> I imagine Gail has run with the bulls, though. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> you have to. Yeah. Has anybody here ever done that? You, no. You, no. I kind of like to do that, but then again, I don't know. I, I would, but it'd be my luck. Something would happen to me, so. It would, I, I, that'd be, that'd be like, this was a bad idea just before I got trampled. Beverly Hills <laughs> has a run with the poodles, which <laughs> I've done twice. <laughs> very good. So what was it like being on the set for your very first uh, produced uh, episode of uh, television, Jenny? It was it was it was pretty exciting. There was that moment where uh, I think it was a scene with Brian and Aaron, and it was the, one of the first things we were shooting. And I just had that moment of, oh wow, I actually wrote that, and now they're saying it, and they're spending a lot of money to film it. Yeah. <laughs> Followed immediately by panic, but uh, no, yeah. it was it was very exciting. Is this your first teleplay that you've that you've yes, seen it is. produced? Yes, yes. Congrats. Yeah. yeah. And your first commentary then? I know, I know. Wow, yeah. how exciting. I'm glad to be. I say it's going well so far. Yes. No. <laughs> I oh, think no. so too. <laughs> then it's just downhill from here. Well, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> and then, a lot. <laughs> oh, that's true. Well, yeah. Uh, the uh, and last year uh, you wrote a uh, one of our uh, webisodes. That was your first. That was the first thing you ever wrote for money, right? Yeah, the the webisodes that we did. You wrote the one that uh, the the Brian you and uh, Matt Jones learned in about. 10 minutes, five minutes. That was the one where you were wearing the ski mask and trying to break into oh, it. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That was that was a fun day. I was going <laughs> to say, that, it was really fun to do those. That was, uh, that was and, and Jenny wrote that thing like a trooper, just knocked that thing out in about five minutes because uh, we needed the, the thing we were going to shoot for some reason, uh, a missing prop or something. Right, something or fell through or something. Something fell yeah. through, yeah. yeah. Probably a good time to talk. About. I love those boots, by the way. Aren't those great boots? They are yeah. awesome. Aren't those great boots? And and Kathleen De Toro, our wonderful costume designer, uh, worked with a gentleman who is a jeweler uh, and a very talented sculptor. And and he sculpted those toe pieces uh, in wax, those skull uh, kick kick plates or whatever on the tips of those boots. Uh, sculpted them uh, and then cast them in, uh, I believe, sterling silver and 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 really, uh, really kind of a distinctive uh, bit of uh, wardrobe there. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I don't think they had time to make the boots from scratch. I think they had to buy them. No, they painted them. Is that what they did? No, yeah, they were original. Oh. I was, I was there. I want, I wanted a pair. I was trying to talk them into making me one, but um, now they were originally white. Solid white, and then they painted them, That's and they made right. the color. That's right, Kathleen. Uh, we like the we like the texture of the leather, but we didn't like the white, so they dyed them or painted them or something. Yeah, and then put those toe pieces on. You do such a good job here, RJ. I just I think this is I, I love I love all you guys always in all these episodes. This episode is so full of wonderful emotion. I love what Brian's doing here. Uh, Betsy, you and Anna, everybody here is just. It's just, this is so well done. Uh, this is an awesome scene for everybody. So you're kind of playing it there, RJ, like uh, you're trying to be the man there and you're trying not to cry, and, and I love that. It all comes through. Definitely, definitely. It was definitely a great scene to see how the the Walt family and the Schrader family would react in this situation. So. Yeah. Really well done. Stephen Michael Cazada does a great job here. As and does, so does Mike, yeah. Yeah, he does. Michael Seamus Wiles. Sure. Yeah. Does, a, does a great job. This is the first time Brian, your character, ever meets, uh, a message to I think, uh, Hank's boss. It is. 
and I had to be introduced to him, of course, because he wouldn't know. I, I would know who uh, Gomez was from party situations and things like that, but it's closing in. Yeah. Where are they? It's Jennifer yeah. Hutchison. Yeah. <laughs> she has to be different, the Jennifer with a G. I know, I know. Blame my parents. <laughs> and Colin, Colin Buxy, who we need to speak of, who is a wonderful director. Yeah, I, yeah. I really like working with him. He's, yeah. a, he's a good guy. He's got the best voice. He is a he is a, a wonderful Englishman. Uh, when he directs for us, this is the second time he directed last season. He directed that great episode in which uh, uh, Brian, in which you your character watched Jane yeah. die, watch her choke to death in her yeah. own vomit. He's he's very talented. And he comes over from England every time he does one of these. And um, he's got the best voice. I've said to him, you know, when you're not directing, you ought to think about being a voiceover guy because I, mean, I, I can't even get even close to it. He has such a deep voice. It's a very a great, very deep British voice. Plummy, I think, is the word. Plummy voice. And he did a great job with What was it like working with Colin, Jenny? Colin was great. He was very just really welcoming and collaborative, and because uh, I was terrified, of course. Um, and he's he's also a, a tall man. He's very tall. <laughs> yeah, so. He wears nice scarves. And yes. He has awesome socks. <laughs> yes. Every time he comes right. to set with awesome he's socks. He's got some flair. He does. He does. No matter what he's wearing, he suit or anything. I love what you do here, Betsy. This is great. Just giving it, just giving it to them both barrels. I open up a can of whoop ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is really the first time that. That we see Marie unleashed, really. I mean, isn't it? I mean, I, I think, think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. She really comes unhinged here and for justifiable reasons. Absolutely. What it was, was the... so fun to do? I bet. I loved I loved that I got to do this with you, Jenny. Welcome. I was so excited that you were writing the script and I, and I had Welcome. so much to do in it. And it was just so great. I was really, I was very excited that I got to, uh, to write this scene too, it was it was so much fun, and you killed it in every take. I mean, you gave us so much amazing stuff. Not every take. There was one that wasn't. <laughs> that one when missed, Brian wouldn't look at me, I struggled. I struggled. <laughs> but fortunately, that wasn't uh, you know in the Brian final. Brian kept cut. singing. It, was it worked strange. out in the end. <laughs> I love this. This I turn like this here. moment too. Yeah. Is nice. Pinkman. Because, you know, you just... You, you look for someone to blame. Yeah. Even Especially when he was just at the hospital with him. You hadn't bought marijuana from him. And then the big turn of uh, Anna, who does a wonderful job, too. Anna, uh, or rather her character, Skylar, defending, uh, s surprising us all, defending mm -hmm. her husband, who she's so angry at and bitter about. And yet, uh, instinctively, she... she uh, it's not defense yeah this is this really what I one of the many things I love about this episode and there's many things uh, I love and one of them is that uh, you know we don't get a lot of chance uh, anymore story wise for the family to circle the wagons and come together uh, since uh, Walt and, and Skyler's estrangement and, yeah. and this is really everyone circling the wagons and coming together as a family and it's just it's nice to see it was it was it was fun to be able to talk it through in the writer's room and Jenny did a great job with it writing and then you guys just crushed it with the acting. Here we are, Gomez giving blood. This one uh, this one was shot by uh, this episode was shot by uh, Peter Reniers, uh, our our wonderful B camera operator. Uh, usually our, our show is shot by Michael Slovis, who's our cinematographer, who does such an excellent job and has been uh, twice, thus far, twice uh, Emmy nominated for his amazing work. But Michael was in the middle of prep on the next ep episode after this, which is uh, episode 309 uh, called Kafka-esque, which we've also done uh, one of these audio commentaries for. So Michael was busy uh, prepping and therefore couldn't shoot this episode. So Peter Rainier shot this one, and then he shot the following episode, Kafka Ask, and did a great job. He is uh, uh, he's a, just a wonderful, uh, very talented DP when he's not operating the camera. He can, he can do it all. I love this bit, Brian. I do too. <laughs> Want to talk about writing this bit, Jenny? Well, this was a fun scene because we talked about it so much in the room that it was such an important moment to sort of highlight that looking for control in a, you know, out of 
when you have no control over the situation. And we really, really wanted to highlight this and, and Walt's kind of particular way of fixing things. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then when we were shooting it, it was great because we actually hadn't scripted it that it took two times. And I love that it didn't quite work the first time. Yeah. And so you take yeah. it and you do it again. I just, I love that. I was silently like squeeing Yay. in my chair. Yeah. <laughs> This is, to me, this is what the show really is. It's those quiet moments yeah. without dialogue. And I, I love the way you, you played that, Brian. But just to bring that up, the um, the water fountain, actually, remember? It was wobbling the whole time. Yeah. If you didn't hit it right, it would wobble. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Because uh, that's obviously just a soundstage set, and, and the, our, our folks bring in a, a water cooler and then hook it up and uh, make water come out of it. But it's not, you know, you had to be careful the way you touched it. Yeah. Huh? yeah. This... Set looks so cool. I think this looks so great. It's awesome. The super lab. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. I I tell you, Mark Freeborn and his crew, uh, such a wonderful job. If I was ever going to make meth, I definitely wouldn't do it in here. Well, and you you want the meth you buy to be well made and, 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 (laughs) you know. Yeah, you can't. You can't. No half measures. Yeah. An aesthetically <laughs> pleasing environment. It needs yeah. to come from an aesthetically yeah, pleasing environment. You don't environment. want half-ass meth, you know. Maybe. No, 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 no. You want full-ass meth. You want full exactly. ass Full-ass meth. blue produced mm-hmm. in a good, pretty place. Yeah. Blue yeah. sky. Yeah. But this is um, in a big soundstage in Q Studios in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's a two-story set uh, within, the, in, within the confines of the soundstage, and it's just... They did an amazing job. Did an amazing job. And just about every wall flies, which means you can pull the walls out very quickly and get a camera or a crew or whatever in there. I like this little bit. Uh, Skyler wondering what's up with him. But being sort of too tired to really investigate. I tried your cell and it went straight to voicemail. That uh, shirt that Jesse is wearing with the uh, pumpkin face. I was in Taos, New Mexico. My girlfriend and I were up there for Thanksgiving two or three years ago, and we stopped in a wall, the Walmart in Taos, New Mexico, and uh, I saw that shirt for sale and thought, uh, what the hell? So I, and they had like three or four, and I guessed at his size and bought them and took them back to Kathleen de Toro. said, I want to see Jesse wearing this. She was just talking about that, oh, about really? you buying that shirt and then being in line with people saying, isn't the, aren't these great? Well, you, it, you know what it was? Because I also bought, we haven't used it yet, but I also bought a bunch of shirts with Kenny Rogers on it. <laughs> and, the, and so I had the pumpkin For yourself head. or for Jesse? Well, I was going to definitely keep one myself, but this woman in line, this woman in line, and sees like I got four Kenny Rogers shirts, and she says, "Where where'd you, where'd you, where's the Kenny Rogers shirts?" And I said, I, "They're over uh, over in that corner." And she's looking at all of them, and I said, "I'm sorry, I bought them all up because I I love me some Kenny Rogers." <laughs> <laughs> love me some Kenny Rogers. <laughs> love me some Kenny Rogers. <laughs> but uh, she she didn't laugh. She she because she loved Kenny Rogers. Who doesn't love Kenny Rogers? Really? Who? He's, he's the gambler. <laughs> he's the gambler. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. They're worried in the booth I'm going to start singing. I know. You gotta, I know. You gotta, then you got to pay for that. You're going to pay for that. That's it. No. It's hard for me not to. That's it. Mm-hmm. We're holding back. In my head. In right. my head, guys. I'm just, just I bet you backing are. it out. This is a great scene. Oh, this was a good scene. Yeah. See on the wall there, on the right side of frame, there's an Ernst Haas photo. Yeah. Uh, and that is. No, that was awesome. That's a great. It's a it's a print of it. But Ernst Haas was this wonderful photographer who's passed away now. But that is a famous photo of uh, Central, Central, Central Central Avenue in yeah. Albuquerque, facing east, uh, sort of in the Knob Hill area. Yeah. It's a beautiful old shot from 1966 or thereabouts. And yeah. always wanted to get it in the show. Uh, very much an inside thing, you know, because we shoot in Albuquerque, New Mexico. This is all Albuquerque that you're watching. This is actually the hospital. Yeah. This was not good a set, point. So. Good point. This was not a set. This was the hospital. That's what's so great about Albuquerque. They let us film everywhere. That's true. There, it's a great town. Great people. Good, good supportive people. Good place to shoot. I love what you do in the scene, Betsy. <laughs> mm. I love doing this scene. It's that that kind of internal scream when you have something yeah. like that going on in your life, and you, you know, my husband is in there possibly dying, and but this fork is here. But yeah. the These fork eggs is are dirty. here. We're all we're all here supposed and, to come back to normal, right? Yeah. And eat our eggs and go about business, and everything's okay. Yeah. Those eggs, by the way, for some reason, like smelled like ashtrays oh or something. Oh my gosh! They, I remember that. They were. Uh, it was horrible. Ugh. 
And Colin very much wanted them to be like the egg panties, like you, yeah. that, like that you get at McDonald's, yeah. Because he's English and he had never really seen that. Oh, and so. he was like, they have to be the egg patties. <laughs> Where did they? So who's? Res- I guess it's our, our our prop master and his crew is responsible for. Uh, the food. Yeah. yeah, props does all the food. Yeah, and this- you. Uh, sorry, this is a small thing, but I, I wanted to point this out before. Kathleen uh, DeToro, costume designer, I have a necklace on that it has a small gold uh, thing on it that has an M on it for Marie. And I know no one else sees that, but she does things like that that make a huge mm-hmm. difference to me. I, I love I love those little details. And she takes the time, you know, like she doesn't have anything else to do, but takes the time to do that, things like that for us. I got to say, and this dialogue right here, talking about, on his way to the hospital. Oh, God, I love this And speech. unfortunately hitting every green light when he really just wanted to spend some time with his family. Jenny, brilliant. <laughs> I know, and what's sad is that ne- I, I think that's only happened one time on Central. <laughs> yeah, Central. exactly. Yeah. yeah. If you go 30 miles an hour, you get them all. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Mm. Really? What I really... That's the that's the support, the law, law-abiding law behavior. To the hospital. Synchronized lights. Wanting to drive that day. This is great. I love the way you're you're doing this story, Brian. And I love I love everybody's the way. I love so much of this. Is gonna sound stupid. It's very much a layperson's. Uh, but you know, it it's it, this is such so, so, such an obvious statement I'm about to say. But but sometimes you, you think if you don't know anything about acting, uh, you think you know the acting is when you're talking, and then it's the other person's turn to act. I mean, that's like a like a doofus layperson's, uh, or you know, that was my opinion, you know, like years ago, before I got to work with mm. you guys. But it's like the person talking is acting, and then it's the other person's turn to act. When they get to talk, the acting is as much the listening as it is the talking. I mean, you look at these wonderful faces here. You see Betsy's face right there, just listening and thinking, and you can, you can read her mind. Mm-hmm. She's thinking, when do I get off? I'm going to have... <laughs> I know, it's like, I need to weird. stop off of the grocery what store. Coffee smell? sounds really is good Brian right now. Is smoking? What is that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I, How many eggs do you have to eat, by the way, during this scene? I don't eat any because... I do. Oh, well, yeah, she, she, you, you didn't have yeah, to eat any of She's not doing that. I I'm. I think I eat some waffles. Yeah, you eat a little bit of waffle. And you got to eat at the same time on every take, oh. right? Oh, so we try to. You try to. I mean, yeah. continuity is an important thing, and you don't want to mess it up. So you, if you are bold enough to, to dig into some food, then you have to try to stay consistent with that on yeah. the, every take. That's yeah. tough. Yeah. That's so much to that yes. gig. You know, what I was actually excited about this year is I actually have a scene with him. Hospital. Oh, oh me too. That's I know. True. I, I awesome? said to him, I said, I, I was so elated to have a scene with you. I never thought yeah. it because I don't live in that dark world. That's true. Really. Here's mm. the other side. This is a, a, a long, long time friend of mine, Javier Grajeda, who plays Bolsa. He's great. Javier's he is. great. He's a, he's a very. Javier uh, is. Uh, I realized later uh, was in an episode of the X Files, uh, which I wrote. Uh, Who was it? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Me All the great are, actors. Jay. Yeah, true. Well, because neither of you were born yet. That was. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't living. Yet. Yeah, I wasn't. Um, I wasn't in acting at the time. So that was a hell. Of a, I had someone was telling me uh, a couple of years back. I uh, met a young woman. I was talking to some high school kids, and she said X Files. My grandparents love the X Files. Wow! <laughs> I was like, oh uh, shit! <laughs> I think I just died a little inside. Yeah. I, I love the X Files. I watched them when I was little. That's cool. Always going to cause for concern, but as I say, but Javier did a great job, yeah, and of course, also in that scene, the, the wonderful Giancarlo Esposito, who yeah. can't say enough good things about. Him. Unfortunately, you can't see him just yet. We're gonna have to Michael French, this actor here, is another friend of mine. Oh, really? And he came in and has, you know, a lot of exposition. And this is not an easy thing for, uh, for actors to do. Come in on a show they don't know. They don't know the crew. Uh, I knew him. And, and you have to come in and lay out all this, you know, this what seemingly is extemporaneous dialogue. Yes. And uh, it's very difficult to do. And he did a terrific job. Yeah, he did. Did a nice job. So what's it like, uh, 
Brian and Betsy, you guys have been on other shows uh, as as uh, back in the past as guest stars. Is it, is it sometimes uh, is it like a like a closed uh, little community, or are people usually other actors usually uh, nice and friendly, or you get a little of everything, I guess, right? A little of both. A little everything. I think everybody's pretty mostly nice and friendly. And and after you're out here for a while, y- you know people. Yeah, that makes sense. On almost every show. I mean, you hear some horror stories, but I think by and large. Throughout 31 years of my career, I, I can count on one hand the ones that have been less than kind yeah. that I've worked with. Well, that's good. Yeah. You going to name anybody? Yeah, I will name them. <laughs> name names. I love this. I love this bit. This was actually, again, uh, in the real hospital. Yeah. And hey, I love how nice they are in Albuquerque. They actually moved all of the sick people out into the street. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that nice? Yeah. Is that, yeah. that, really, is that nice? Wood chairs and they have their priorities. <laughs> We're you shooting know, a movie. Come on. Don't know, be. You, come on. Come don't on, be just so selfish. Your sick. Just move you know, over a little bit. Just getting them out of the parking lot in, in a little bit of shade and uh, letting us do our thing. I was so accommodating. I just yeah. thought it was wonderful. Mm. I couldn't do that with a straight face. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I screwed that up. Uh, this this hospital, uh, there's one wing of it I think that is still active, but we weren't anywhere near that that part of it. I think this is, um, I think this was the one that was under construction at the time. Yeah, or maybe there's no. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, yeah. it's going through a transition. Um, you were talking about like there's a couple other actors here who have one or two lines. That's always harder. It's actually easier for actors to have a lot to do than a little yeah. to do. Oh my gosh, yes. Surprisingly. That makes sense because because you you know you have to keep that life going in your in your eyes and mm-hmm. your expressions and that's and, a beautiful and, shot. Yeah, this is this this well, is, the this, is just Me, this is crazy. Horrific. These two dudes are really nice in person, even if they look scary. Daniel Moncada, Daniel Moncada, who had never acted never before. acted before this yeah. time, and this was his when we were shooting this. This was his last day on our show. Mm. And uh, he and his brother, Lewis, just did a terrific job. Mm-hmm. Really vitally important. We should talk a little yeah. bit about this. Uh, about the well, legs. The yeah, fact he would actually have his legs amputated for his art is <laughs> amazing. <laughs> it's, amazing. It's, it's so nice of him to do that. You know, it was a good thing we shot it in order, that part, because if we had to go back. Yeah. You know, and that we were, in on. fact, in a hospital <laughs> when now, we did it. Mm, this not on the soundstage. That's disturbing. That is. Uh, obviously, uh, a visual effect, an amazing one. This is not a visual effect, however, although the blood a little bit is. But that one shot you just saw, this here, this here. is a gentleman... Uh, a very athletic uh, amputee in real life, yeah. a gentleman who did a stunt, that stunt for us. But the previous shot of the actor, Daniel, uh, was done with a visual effect. They put some, I believe, green stockings. Green stockings on. Yeah. Yes. And then erased his, uh, his legs. <laughs> From stylish. the sublime to the ridiculous. <laughs> exactly. Idle hands. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's doing meth again. <laughs> oh, I love this bit coming up here. I can't even believe we got away with this. You know, Aaron can really pull that off, can't he? He has that face. (laughs) I can't even believe we got away with this. I like the moment when he thinks of it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) But by the way, we had a discussion in the writer's room, and the guys sort of had, the guys, myself, and the other guys in the writer's room sort of had to make it clear that they said, you got to have it not work. Because if it worked, that would be the end of the show. That's all he would have been doing like 12 hours later. (laughs) So we had to show that it doesn't actually work. I love this song too, uh, found by uh, Thomas Goliabich, our wonderful music. You have the best music. I tell you, we do. Between Dave Porter, our composer, and Thomas G, our oh, music yeah. supervisor, just great stuff. This is uh, oh shoot, I can't think of the name of the group. The kind of crazy sort of it reggae. It me what you remember, and it it scares me a little. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I'm impressed. It's, uh, oh. I mean, the yeah, music, that, I mean, really, it's amazing. Oh. The I don't names even remember, remember what I'm doing here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, right. I you. remember um, Michelle McLaren having photos <laughs> of, of practice shots of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was fun. A fun, yeah. fun day in the writer's room we came up with this, oh, right? Yeah. Jim? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> and Jeremiah Bitsui, who uh, plays Victor here, does a great job. I love the yeah. dead eyes. He doesn't yeah. have them in real life. He just, uh, I mean, he 
he's a very friendly, uh, outgoing, uh, charming young man. So sweet and cheerful. Yeah. <laughs> and then we start shooting. Tell. <laughs> yeah. There's Walt's sweet ride. There's Walt's mm-hmm. sweet ride. That poor car. Yeah. And that windshield. That damn windshield. Yeah. Broken never... taped. Broken taped. <laughs> Never change. Oh, I love, I love your, I love, I love you guys here. I love this acting here. I love the sea of cops. Yeah. yeah. And Heisenberg in the middle. Yep. Reverend. Reverend. <laughs> it looks so put upon. I love it. <laughs> like, like not even nervous. Just like, you know, for Christ's sake. Just call you right back on my cell phone. Okay. That's great. I told you to wait. I don't know how many These are tough scenes to shoot for the sound crew because you, yeah. you you're standing on the side of a very busy street. Busy street. We actually had to uh, do ADR, um, automated dialogue replacement, for those scenes uh, here because it's just the the sound of cars and trucks going by is just too much. Yeah. So. And you guys do it wonderfully. You would never know that uh, all this dialogue, not the dialogue on Jesse's side, but the dialogue on your side. Right, all, dialogue all on the exterior side. So I have to go into uh, later in post-production when the, the episode is cut, I go in there in front of a microphone and copy what I said on the day that we shot this and uh, would trying to, um, you know, do a facsimile of the, of the same emotional content and uh, redo it, basically. I, I, when I see you guys doing that, I always feel so bad that we, I mean, there's no way, our, we have really good uh, sound recordists, uh, they do a wonderful job, but there's there's nothing they can humanly do for a scene like that that has cars in it, so I always feel bad, it has nothing, you know, never their fault, but I always feel bad uh, ever asking you guys to do ADR, but you always do such a, all of you guys do such a good job with it. Well, there's jeopardy, if it's, if it's a, a highly emotional scene and you have to redo it, yeah. it's really difficult to get back to that same level yes but if it's not it's it becomes a craft but i i, I whenever we can humanly avoid it yeah. we, we do because uh oh, yeah. you guys aren't robots and 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 you're, you're trying to redo as you just said trying to get to an emotional state well, rj at. rj's a robot R- says a ro- yeah i'm a robot i that's why i walk with the crutches i didn't know and didn't you wonder why we didn't pay him <laughs> oh what don't robot. tell him don't tell him you guys get paid I'll get, pay, I'll get paid for this? When did that happen? <laughs> I thought it was just a great honor to be on a show. That's right. That's, that's Y'all what get money for this? Maybe we should put this on Saturday mornings like Small Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Small Wonder. Huh? That was a show. Look at those figures. Look at these gals. I know. Hotsy Totsies. <laughs> Hottest women of nighttime. <laughs> I love this scene. This is one of my favorite scenes of the whole episode. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, this really is. I love this scene. RJ, you know, you did a great job here, and obviously Brian, both of you guys are so good here. And uh, tell the story of the of the book here, uh, Jenny. Oh well, uh, we had we wanted to have a book, and Vince had suggested this book. It just really seemed to fit the scene. And uh, the Monday after the episode aired, as I'm checking my Facebook, I had an email from uh, Mark Bowden, the author of the book. And oh, no way. Yeah, and he was like, I was watching, you know, one of my favorite shows last night, and a familiar book popped up, and I just wanted to thank you guys. It was really, it was very exciting. Wow, <laughs> that's cool. He's a very good writer. He's also the guy who wrote uh, Black Hawk it's, Down. It's very, that's what I very, yeah, very talented writer. And of course, Killing Pablo. Very interesting story about as as as, as uh, Walter Jr. Own. explains. Yeah, as uh, Pablo Escobar who. You know, so many things I love about this scene, the emotion, the wonderful bond uh, between these two, uh, the desire on Walt's part and and on Walter Jr.'s part to talk about more things, to share mm-hmm. deeper emotions, but instead, by proxy, they're talking about, you know, it's just sometimes it's hard to communicate with our families. and but, Especially but, uh, father and son. Yeah. It's That's, a wonderful bit, yeah. Yeah, it's very difficult. So he he gave it to me. Figured I'd read it. Uh, I I need to. I'll be right back. Okay. okay. No, I, I assure you, we are hard at work. Absolutely. 
So I can expect delivery by tomorrow as good. Well, uh... He chooses to take this phone call instead, which is yeah. something, you know, it's interesting. Although, I wouldn't want this guy mad at me. This guy, uh, uh, Gus, Gus Fring. Uh, this is a phone call I think you got to take. I think he definitely carries a lot of weight. He does in your life. <laughs> he does indeed. I mean, not, not not on purpose, of course, but he just, he set us way back. And <laughs> <laughs> Poor Gail. Oh, dancing. <laughs> You're yeah. such a bastard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think douche tart is the term they're looking for. Douche tart. Yeah, douche tart. Poor Gail. He didn't do anything. He's tap dancing fast to get this story out. He is. I love how you yeah. play this. <laughs> I love the undershirt, too. I love there's always an undershirt. It's you know? order. It, it, yeah. I think it's important that, that Walt... Uh, display order in his life somehow, yeah. that, and that seems orderly. Yeah, he's not unkempt. Yeah, in the tidy whities you're finally out of those too. Very orderly. Actually, no, we see uh, Walt's tidy whities in the next episode after this one. Oh, true. Yeah, we see Walt's tidy whities just not, a lot. Can't wait. We're, it's horrible we're to not see working. someone of this age finally in underwear. I just realized <laughs> that's what America wants to see, and I gave over to it. You got to give America they what it wants. Brian these Cranston. are beautiful. I love yeah. all these I love these transitions. We have a couple of guys oh. from LA who shoot these for us. Do a great job. They're done with a still camera. Done with a still digital camera, and a really great job. Well, Albuquerque has so many great views to it. It's true. A lot of different places to point a camera that are beautiful and striking and, and and also have not been seen uh, very often in other movies or TV shows. Do you remember last year when they lost the camera with the balloon? Oh, oh that God. was the first year. Yeah, I, well, no. No, it was, it? it was the end of the, the end of last oh, season, and oh, yeah. it was season two. two. It was se season two, yeah, so, which was now. Yeah, two. <laughs> yeah, that was the story. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> that was the shot for the... Uh, the plane crash. The plane crash, yeah. the, 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 as it were, the uh, teddy bear's eye view of the teddy bear falling toward the pool tired. and Walt standing by the pool. And we thought we'd do it practically with a weather balloon pulling up a video camera away from that. But then the camera just floated <laughs> away. Had a mind of its own, and it went away. You know what the sad it's, thing was? It was found 220 miles away. It lost its tethering, like yeah. Wizard of Oz. <laughs> yeah, it did. But you know what the worst part about that? Yeah. The lens cap was on. So yes, it we didn't was. Get anything. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't do that. <laughs> it, 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 it happens. <laughs> so hey, it's like a good one. I love this bet. <laughs> uh, on occasion. Water's a big booster for the DEA. You heard what happened? He's going to feed every cop in the building. Actually, by the way, this is my favorite scene that's, that's of wonderful. Gomez's yeah. in yeah. the entire 33 yeah. episodes we've shot so far. That, right that yeah. moment of... Uh, what's well, actually, you know, it's, it's, it, this is my favorite episode for him. It's, it's that moment, uh, and it's the moment before that. No, I'm sorry. It's a moment coming up when uh, when uh, the guy and the when the when the when the surviving cousin dies, and uh, Gomez says, uh, "Burn in hell, you piece of shit," and yeah. you, you believe it. It's 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 yeah. Stephen did a really nice job. Stephen is an Albuquerque local who is a stand-up uh, comedian and and is just a wonderful guy and very funny and and very talented and really coming into his own as an actor because I don't think he had acted that much before uh, we put him in the pilot of. Breaking yeah, it, I mean, yeah. really, he did he did stand up. Yeah, yeah, which is different. And yeah. this uh, he goes deeper than I've ever seen him go in this particular episode. Uh, this you know, and he's done a lot of great work for us. But this one, you know, it's more emotional than I've seen him do before uh, on our show, and he does a great job. I just love the characters balls for Gus Fring to oh, show know. up here <laughs> just to sit right next to me ingratiate himself yeah. with the, the grieving spouse and yeah he's great he's the man who ordered it I love Jim Carlin yeah. he is so <laughs> yes, he's freaking awesome cool guy. and a he's great man such a, just yeah. a really nice man a sweet guy yeah. he does something come he's up he's so and, elegant he's, so, he he's and buttoned down and, and professional and perfect I mean the character and the real guy is is, is full of life and, and, and enthusiastic and uh, Jim Carlo in person is, is, is not Gus Fring but uh but he is just, he's such a great guy. And he plays that character so well. He does. And he, 
It's what I love about all of you guys. Brian, Betsy, RJ, all, and, and Giancarlo is not here. All the, all our wonderful actors, Dean, uh, Anna, uh, Aaron, everybody, all you guys know what seems simple and is yet not perhaps is that you, you don't take it any further than it has to go. You, 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 you throw things away, you underplay them. You always give, give what is necessary, but I, I would be tempted as an actor if I were one, which I'm not, to, 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 to lay it on thick. But but there's so much of this show is so beautifully underplayed, and and uh, you guys are all evidence of that, and and it makes it ever so much more real, and just, just I love it. I love the way you guys do it. It's good chicken, huh? Yeah. Mr. Frank. Whose stomach was that? RJ. It's not me. I've eaten. <laughs> Bad tea. No. Brian. I had a coffee yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> You know. I love this bit. Oh, God, I know. You this is intense. It's basically Walt finding out if his life is in danger, if his family is in danger at this point. Are you going to kill us? He is not a problem <laughs> for us, for our business. It's a little scary to think about how crazy this show can be, and you're here one minute and gone the next. Message? Let that, that be a lesson to you. Uh, right? I hide in Vince, we're good friends, right? Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, I think you're safe, RJ. I don't think you're going anywhere. What it means, please, if, if you. So, Jenny, any other stories from the set? Anything? Uh... Our secrets, right? <laughs> well, these scenes were always kind of um, challenging because that lobby you can't tell is about the size of a an airport terminal, <laughs> and we had to fill it and make it look. Full, and I think we did a good job, but that was definitely a challenge on the day. Gotcha. Now, thank me and shake my hand. Thank you. Thank you again. You're quite welcome, Mr. White. Did you hear that? Jenny, you were in an episode in season one, actually. Yes, I was. You were an extra. Yes. It Which was, scene? It was, uh, it was the scene. I want to speak for it. You want to tell that story? Um, yeah, it's the scene in uh, Ellie and Gretchen's birthday party. And we needed some extra people. We needed some, I think, younger people, because I think the uh, extras were skewing a little bit older. And so Vince asked me and Patty Lynn, who was the writer of that episode, to, to be extras. And you guys so, did a good job. Yeah, we're right behind you guys. As you as you and Patty put it, you you thought you felt like uh, spare wives from Big Love. Yes, that's a, that's yes, we were very beige. <laughs> awesome. Yes, no, my boyfriend told me that. Um, yeah. Oh, that was Andy. Andy, <laughs> yes, Andrew yes. said that. No, gotcha. yes, yes. That's always great to hear. Oh, oh, what's that? Oh, what's he doing there? What was Jonathan Banks doing in there what, just what, now? What? what? Picking up his mail? What's that? I think. What the? I think he made a modi. I love Jonathan Banks. Me too. He's so cool. Great scene of the day though. I, you know, I'm very hopeful that I might have some scenes with people that I never thought I would have scenes with on the show because I had one with Giancarlo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Maybe anything is possible. I know. I, I was really looking forward to trying to have a scene with the cousins. <laughs> well, you know, you know, anything's possible in Breaking Bad. And also we go back and forth in time. You know, people who we think are, well, people who are technically passed away and can come back in a, in a flashback. You never know. Mm. I'm feeling nervous. Scared. It doesn't look good for Javier. No, no it doesn't. No. doesn't look good for Javier. But he's a friend of yours. I'm sure he'll stick around. Yeah. For a little bit. For such a quiet episode, it does have a pretty high body count. <laughs> <laughs> it says a lot about you, Jenny. Yeah, I know. I, know. I don't even think some of these deaths were in the script until the last minute. Yeah, yeah. I want to kill you. You're what dead. You say? She loves the blood and guts. <laughs> the power yeah, feels good. That's true. <laughs> Was this a real house, uh, Javier? Was uh, uh, was this a set or is it a real house? That's a real house. It's this really beautiful, um, it's actually a bed and breakfast. Uh, Ah. It's an old, you know, villa basically from when that was just an outpost. Okay. You know, and it's it's really gorgeous and very well kept and uh, and the owners were super nice. Nice. Uh Uh-oh. Don't, don't go out there. Yeah, I, <laughs> don't go out the there. Door. Don't right stay in there either. Good job. Run away from the gunfire. Yeah. <laughs> Closet. That's cool. I like this. Oh, show. nice gun. I wonder where I can get one. Wow. 
Gus Fring. Gus Fring's a You nasty badass. man. <laughs> Did he do that? I think he uh, he might be behind that somehow, in some fashion. He covers his tracks, too, you know, that he breaks that phone. That's I the end love of that. you, RJ. Yeah. That's, that's a nice touch. I like that. Love that you too, nice bitch. Touch. That's very really good. So are you guys back together now or what? Yeah, she's on. <laughs> There's a little slowdown on that one shot. I think we slowed it down just a little in post to make it last a little longer because it was such a sweet moment. If you look closely, yeah. you notice it's just a little just a slowdown. Little, oh, did you? Yeah, it makes little, it kind of dreamy. A little dreamy. Yeah. Very sorry, speed. A little very yeah, speed. a little very speed, which is doesn't always work because sometimes yeah. it, it stands out in a bad way. What was awesome about this scene, it was in the morning, so I was already tired, so that was real sleeping. Yeah, it was really, really early in the morning for RJ. I think it was 11 a.m. <laughs> oh, no, I think it was like 4 in the afternoon. God, can you, oh. I, I can't, when I saw it, and I know, you know. No, this. When I saw him with yeah. all those tubes. No, this definitely was hit hard for me because it reminded me of my grandpa at the time. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was actually, you, both you guys were, all, all three of you guys were feeling real emotion here. Is that, that you're feeling it, Betsy, uh, here? Hey, I'm sure, crying right hey, now. I'm hey, not sure, even joking. Yeah, now it sure looks like you're feeling it. It's a well, great. It, it's, you can't help, but if, if this scenario reminds you of something that really happened in your life, you can't help but, but be called back to that moment. You That's, know? That makes sense. Three characters here. Four characters suffering uh, emotionally, but then one of them, Walt's Brian's character, Walt, also with an extra dollop of guilt that the other three are not feeling. Dean yeah. was so happy yeah, to come is. back to shoot that too. Yes. <laughs> I bet he was. That's right. yes. He was tickled. Yes. That was him. That was, yeah. really yeah. him. That was his yeah. hand. Yeah, that was his hand. Yeah. That was his hand. I bet he was so happy. Well, great job, everybody. Great yes. job, Jenny. Uh, yes, congratulations. Yes. Thank, Thank you, Jenny. Congrats. Thank you, guys. I had the time of my life. Doing doing <laughs> the time of my life. I'm serious. I did a great, great See you work. on the next one. That's See right. you next year. Oh, we're never giving another one. That was oh, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks so much. Au revoir. <laughs>